All right, did I catch your attention? Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about some things that need to be broke down, smashed, cut down, or burned. And yes, I have done all of these. Why? For freedom sake. Because I saw it in the word of God and I believed it. And I wasn't just a hearer of the word, I did the word. And I am praying Ephesians 5 will be the blessing of this teaching. Ephesians 5 um, says to walk in love. And it has this whole paragraph about how to walk in love. But instead of just saying, well, this is how you walk, you know, you skip along the path and you smile at everybody, it actually describes what is darkness. It describes darkness and it says in order to walk in love, these are the things that cannot be in your life in order to fully walk in the, in the ways of Christ. And then in verse 11, it says, take no part, no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And by golly, that's what I'm doing. And not without fear and trembling, because I realize the weightiness of this is huge. Because I remember when I first learned some of this stuff, I was like, what? And so I'm not going to do a very long teaching so as to not overwhelm you, but I want you to look at the word of God so as to draw you in deeper to the word of God. All right, so to walk in love and to walk in freedom, we got to know where the darkness is. From old to new, the darkness was there after the garden, right? So here we have all the ways that God has told us to stay away from the darkness. And yet still today, we have people that have no idea because we are not speaking about these enough in the circles that we're in with believers who I pray would be open to see what the word says. So here's what the word says. This particular verbiage is in Deuteronomy 7, 5 through 6. And I'm not going to just give you Old Testament. I'm going to give you new. This says what we're to do with the darkness that is among us, the physical items that are, are among us. All right. So this is what God says. He says, break down their altars. He didn't say Christianize it. He said, break them down. He says, smash their sacred stones. Boy, we could do a whole lesson on crystals and how the witchcraft and the occult uses them. Now, we collect rocks and different things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. We, we pick them up off the street, you know, wherever. Um, this is different. This is a huge occult item. Be careful what venue you're buying some things. All right. Then it says to cut down their asher poles. Okay, so when we think of poles, we get, well, something like a prostitute pole, right? So it's not saying, hey, put the pole up in your living room and dance around it sexually, but just do it to Christian music. So there are some practices that people are ignorantly doing that are absolutely evil from the occult, but we're just putting Christian music and scripture to it. And we're saying, now it's okay. That's not what the word says. He says, cut down this break down this. No, it is not good. Why? Because it's legal rights to the enemy in your life. So we're going to look at, um, the next one says, burn their idols in the fire. Okay. So again, we, me included, you, you buy things, you go places and you go, Oh, I'll put that on my mantle. Okay. But idols are legal rights as well to the enemy. It can be a Buddha. It can be, we had a Mayan calendar with all these demonic symbols, but it's part of their culture. And we just want to celebrate it. Oh no, no, no. We're basically giving the enemy legal rights. We're not basically, we did give the enemy legal rights. Think about the different items that people would bless and pass around and they would be healed by it because items can have power on them, whether they are blessed or whether they are cursed. And so God is very clear about this and he wants us to know he does not change. Malachi 3, 6 says, for I, the Lord, do not change. He loves his children the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the things that were bad for us yesterday, today, and forever are always going to be the same. They do not change. No matter what cool thing or practice comes into this world, it is important to see, is that evil? I don't need to Christianize it and call it it holy. It's either evil or not, right? So let's look at another example from the word of God that says about this topic. In Deuteronomy 7, a little bit long or farther down, it says the images of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet the silver or gold on them, which means don't, don't sell things that you all of a sudden realize are evil because you don't want to give that evil to somebody else. 
and do not take it for yourselves or you will be ensnared by it. There's many stories in the Bible about that. For it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house like it. Um, or you'll be set apart for destruction. What? God was saying, don't do it. Don't even bring them in to your property. It is evil and it will destroy you. God doesn't change. So that means that things can still be brought into our culture as we well know and are seeing the days are getting darker. We shouldn't be doing the things of the world, bringing the things of the world into us. We should be getting rid of that and actually God says, regard it as vile and utterly detest it for it is set apart for destruction. So when we talk about how does darkness get in, this scripture is talking about certain things that we have allowed in our life that we are, they're physical items that are saying a stake in the ground, this is enemy territory. I'm sorry, it keeps going lower. Let me tighten that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so that is one way we can allow um, darkness into our lives through things. But I know some of you may be thinking, Kelly, that's the Old Testament. I like the New Testament better, but God doesn't change. Acts 19, 18 through 20 says, many of those who believed, which I pray is you, now came and openly confessed. It will always begin with repentance. When I'm saying some of these things and I could list out so many other things right now, which I'm not yet, um, they confessed what they had done. They repented, right? And then a number of them who practiced sorcery, they brought their scrolls together. And they didn't sell them. They burned them. They burned them publicly. And they told the value was a, such of great value, they could have gotten a lot of money for it. But we don't pass on evil to somebody else. So from the old to the new, we destroy the evil things in our life that give the enemy legal rights. So in the Old Testament, a good group yeah. would come in He'd get rid of all the vile things so that the Lord could fully work through his obedience and the holiness. And when the bad king came in, he'd bring back all those things because it gave legal rights to the pagan ways. So you can see the pattern there is so important. And so, and since these are short lessons, I'm only going to talk about those few scriptures to you to say in your home, your physical home, God cares what is in your home. If there was just a couple snakes in my home, would that be okay with me? I'm a good parent. I don't want one snake in my home, not one to kill, steal, or destroy my children. So I do care about what's allowed in my home, what's allowed to entertain us. But obviously that gives legal rights to our mind, our will and emotions. What we see, we can't unsee. What we hear, we can't unhear. And so when we give legal rights, even in our home, it can then give legal rights to this holy temple. Because remember, a Christian can be drunk because we have a will and we can decide to do that. A Christian can get sick because we live in a cursed world. A Christian can be demonized according to the Bible because we can come into agreement with darkness. So rather, I want to expose that darkness and say, look at the word of God for freedom's sake. Stop listening to the world and begin to listen to the word. I bless all of you in the name of Jesus. And I ask God to give you fresh revelation from his word, from the Holy Spirit, how to set your temple free and the temple that you live in. All right. Bless you guys.